The Great Turkey Walk by Kathleen Carr, continuing with chapter 12 and 13. There did turn out to be some folks past the Potawatomi. We never could be sure of exactly who or what to expect, though. This was because we was journeying now through what Mr. Peace called virgin land, on account of he never personally been over the terrain in his earlier travels. But it didn't make me worried about getting lost, because no matter what, we still had to follow water. The birds and four-legged creatures would always need plenty to drink at the end of each day. And Mr. Peace said that if we kept following the Kansas River like we was at the present time, and the Smoky Hill Fork when it branched off, why then, sooner or later, we'd get us into the foothills near to Denver. Still, it was a little surprising when the first people we came across was cavalry soldiers from Fort Riley. That was only a couple of days past seeing the last of my paw and cleaver. The thought did strike me in passing, before we met up with the real article, that it might have been considerably easier on my finances if the U.S. Cavalry, cavalry had come to the rescue instead of Mr. John Winter Prairie and his Potawatomi. Then I studied my birds again and decided not to be greedy. If those Indians hadn't been as honest as they was, they could have had my entire establishment a sight easier than paw. As it stood now, I just sort of spread a little friendship and turkey culture, same as that Johnny Appleseed that Miss Rogers used to tell us about in school. So I started thinking about Miss Rogers again. Wouldn't she be pleased we'd gotten as far as we had? It was hard to believe she didn't even know about Jabeth or my meeting up with Paul and Cleaver or the Indians. She'd enjoy those stories fine. I was walking along with my turkey's right flank making up a letter in my head, trying to explain all of it to Miss Rogers and wondering how I'd ever get it all down on real paper. Every time I put a quill pen or pencil stub between my thick fingers, the letters just sort of came out backwards or upside down, no matter how hard I tried. I guess my brain must have been practically back in Union, Missouri, worrying out the letter business instead of paying attention right here in the Kansas Territory. Because when that first shot rang out, I near to jumped from my skin. Only then did I hear the horses bearing down and the whoops. Woo-wee, I got me one. Dang, missed. My eyes opened wide and my head cleared itself right fast. It was mounted, blue-coated soldiers surrounding us on all sides. Seemed near to a regiment of them, and they was taking pot shots at my turkeys. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Stop. I stumbled over a body and stooped to pick up a hen, gasping her last gasp. There now, I whispered to her, smoothing the beautiful feathers. There now, guess you'll never get to see Denver. I ran up to the rear of the wagon, which Mr. Peace had stopped, and laid the hen gently atop a mountain of corn. Turkey heaven, for sure. As I wiped my bloodied hands on my trousers, I felt another righteous anger grow in me. Worse than that time with Cleaver and his coconut tricks. I spun around to the soldiers, grinning at my nervous flock from atop their horses. Their, rivals, their rifles was already pointed and ready to shoot another round. I'll, I'll personally thrash any man so much as sets his fingers to a trigger again. I managed to splutter out. It was hard on account of I was burning hot all over and could even feel my heart pumping. What, what right have you to go after my birds? I thought soldiers was supposed to protect innocent civilians. Out of the way, boy, one soldier yelled. We ain't had nothing to shoot, in, sh shoot at in a long time. Engines is almost gone, said another. And there ain't no wild game left 50 miles to either side of the fort. He sighted down his gun barrel. That was provocation enough for me. I stomped off toward him and his horse, fire in my eyes. Take it easy, Simon, Mr. Peace urged from atop the wagon. Beyond taking it easy, I am. In another moment, I was hauling that soldier right out of his saddle, toppling him to the dust where he belonged. The rest of the cavalry, I guess, they should have shot me right then and there, but the sporting instinct seemed to get the better of them. Weapons was lowered as they nudged their horses into a circle around the dismounted soldier and me. Come on, Clancy, one fellow egged him on. Give this farmer boy what for. Clancy struggled to his feet, brushed down his uniform, and squared off into a boxing stance. I'd once seen some fellows use outside the saloon in Union. I raised my fists in imitation. Swing at him, Clancy. Give him your left hook. Clancy swung, but since his friends had already told me about his left hook, I was already ducking. I stood for another couple of swings after that, just swaying to one side or the other out of range of his fist, then decided boxing was a silly way to try to win a fight. I bunched up my own right fist as if I was going to go for this Clancy's broad red face. Instead, I lowered my head just like Uncle Lucas's bull back home and rammed at his barrel chest. Oomph. The wind went out of that soldier right fast. 
I can tell you. I stood over his body a long time. Then I looked up at the others. Which one of you turkey-murdering villains is next? One of them was already easing off his mount, and I would have took him easy, too, if another soldier hadn't come riding up. There was gold braid all over his shoulders and his campaign hat, too. This one must be an officer. Attention! Never saw anybody put in order as fast as them soldiers. In a minute, even their horses was lined up in a straight row. Sergeant Johnson! Captain Master, sir, the soldier now at the head of the road barked back. Explain exactly what is happening here, Sergeant. Sir, the sergeant looked flustered. Sir, we was just having us a little fun. Fun? I roared, the anger still in me. They was using my turkey flock for target practice, is what they was doing. Just out of the blue, they come swooping down, shooting their guns off, and us, totally unarmed and innocent, killed at least one of my birds and upset the rest out of a month's growth, too. The captain turned his steely eyes back to the sergeant. Is that the truth, Johnson? I'll tell you, it's the honest truth, Mr. Peace joined in from atop the wagon seat. We've survived Indians and wrestlers already, and I'd take on any of them again sooner than your cavalry here, Mr. Peace said. That word cavalry like it was a dirty one. The captain just sat straight as an arrow astride his big chestnut horse, eyeing his men on the edge of the prairie to one side, us in the middle of the rutted trail, and the soldiers I'd, the soldier I'd bested decorating the dust between them. What happened to Trooper Clancy? <clears throat> he was aiming to shoot at my birds again, I answered. I fought him fair and square, and I won. I'll take on the whole entire U.S. Army if I have to. Nobody attacks me and mine without cause. Admirably put, young man that captain said we could use a few good men like you in this man's army ever think of enlisting no sir and after today don't suppose i ever will either the captain considered that for a long moment then he turned to the sergeant johnson you and your pl platoon are on report sling clancy over his saddle and return to camp i watched the sergeant's face turn hard and cold as the captain addressed me again what's your name young man Simon, sir. Simon Green. I'll make a note of that. You may put in a request for reimbursement of any valuables lost in this unauthorized skirmish. Send it to the superintendent of the Army in Washington City. Cite the location, just east of Fort Riley in the Kansas Territory. And the date. I shall make a suitable report myself. Yes, sir. I said that as if I was truly going to do it, but the point was beyond me. I didn't figure I'd live to see the day the government way back in Washington City was about to pay up. Denver price for a few birds shot by its rowdy troops. Not if they was putting all their energy into harassing civilians and chasing Indians off their lands. Yes, sir, I just might do that. Excellent, Captain Johnson replied. Always work through the proper channels. Only way to get things done. He tipped his hat to Mr. Peace, then to me. I wish you an uneventful continuation of your journey, wherever it may be taking you. The captain pulled at his reins and was gone, trotting his mount across the grassy prairie due northwest due north-northwest. Mr. Peace waited till the whole lot of them was beyond hearing range. Then he tore off his hat and flung it at the ground. Bureaucracy, he spat. Glad I'm heading farther west. Hope to get so far west I won't never have to hear about government no more. Jabez's head suddenly poked out of the patch of dried grass. Is they gone? All gone? I spun on him. Where have you been, Jabez? Could have used your moral support here. I surely could have. Sorry, Simon, he hung his head for the first time in days, but the Missouri militia, the pro-slavery one, my old master used to belong to it. Can't say I ever took to soldiers. Nope. I swung between Jabez, Mr. Peace, still on the wagon in my flock. Them toms was gobbling up a storm. The hens who never... The hens who never did do any gobbling were clicking to beat the band. They was all going around in circles, heads bobbing, flustered as bad as when my pa was in charge of them. We have to calm these birds. Think a corn supper would help? Mr. Peace finally eased off the wagon and stretched his back. Wouldn't hurt. They're too wound up for any more traveling today, that's for certain. How many did we lose? Only the one for sure, but I haven't looked real close. I hate to do it, but I think we're having turkey for supper. Mr. Peace bent to comfort Emmett, who'd been whining by the rear of the wagon where I'd set the shot bird. Come on, Emmett. I over overheard him murmur. Ain't all humans as thoughtless as the ones we've been mostly meeting up with lately. Let's you and me see to the mules and the horses. I broke out the corn and Jabez started in cleaning my lost hen. She cooked up more tender than unexpected after all the miles of muscle stretching she'd done walking from Missouri. And there was a lot of her. 
all bittersweet from her useless sacrifice. We saw Fort Riley off in the distance the next morning. There was a bunch of buildings clustered to the north side of the Kansas River. None of us had any desire to inspect the army camp at close quarters. We swung around past and then came to where the Smoky Hill Fort flowed into the bigger Kansas. It was a relief to get to that last piece of civilization behind us. Far as I was concerned, I didn't care if we never saw another two-legged critter till we found Denver. <laughs>